In this video, we're going to talk about how we solve algebraic equations. If you've been following along with your Google Classroom assignments, you'll notice that these notes go hand in hand with the IXL assignment labeled S.6 or one variable equations number six, solving two-step equations. Before we get into the steps for solving algebraic equations, there's a couple of important vocabulary words that we should review. Does anyone remember what an equation actually is? The definition of the word equation. Remember, there's a built-in hint right here in our vocabulary word. Right, an equation is a mathematical sentence that uses an equal sign to show that two quantities are equal. So right here, equa sounds like equal for equal sign and equal. So it's always a nice hint to remind us equations have an equal sign and are representing two quantities equal to each other. Our next vocab word is the word solution. Now we know that a solution is an answer. It's an answer to a problem. In math, it's the same thing. The solution is our answer. It's a value for the variable that makes our equation true. So I'm going to write in over here the answer. In the equations that we're talking about, we are only going to have one solution or one correct answer. We should also write down, to help us remember, the correct order of operations, the phrase PEMDAS. Very quickly, we remember that PEMDAS is the series of operations that we have to perform in order to correctly arrive at a mathematical answer. When we do this, we know that we always work from left to right. When we get to multiplication or division, we leave an arrow there to remind us that we're working from left to right, whichever one we see first. And the same thing with addition and subtraction. Left to right. I'm going to fill that in so I remember. Now, in order to solve an equation algebraically, we have to have a couple other words in our vocab bank. The first important word that we have to know in our vocab bank is the word inverse. The word inverse, if you recall correctly, means opposite. So if I asked you to tell me the opposite or inverse of up, you would tell me down. Very good. If I asked you to tell me the opposite or inverse of on, you would tell me off. Perfect. We also need to know the word isolate. When someone or something is isolated, it's alone. It's separate. Our goal when we're solving equations algebraically is to isolate our variable. So we're going to use the inverse or opposite order of operations to isolate the variable and solve for our solution. We're going to do that by following these two steps that are going to help us follow the process. So the very first step says highlight the variable and draw the scale line. Now, when we are solving equations, we're going to think about balancing a scale. In order to keep a scale balanced, you have to do the same thing to both sides. We have to do the same thing to both sides when we're balancing our mathematical scale. So, over here you'll notice a picture of a scale. There's a line in the middle that separates the two scales. Our equal sign is going to be our point of reference for that scale line. So everywhere we see an equal sign, we're going to draw our scale line. We're also going to highlight our variable so we know what we're trying to isolate. Now remember, when we usually introduce this topic to you, we tell you a little secret that most math teachers keep hidden from their students. Normally in math, we use numbers, right? Right. But now that we're in algebra, we started introducing all these letters. But the numbers, they don't like this at all. They're actually very upset about it. 
So as mathematicians, it is our goal, it is our purpose now to help these numbers get away as far as possible from those letters. So we're going to do that by using our inverse order of operations. Let's look at example one. We see that we have a y. We want to get the y alone on the left side of our equal sign. What is stopping y from being alone? Yes, exactly. There's a 4 and a 2. Now, we know that any number that's standing alone has a little teeny tiny invisible plus sign in front of it. So actually, let's draw a little teeny tiny plus sign in there. Now, a plus sign represents which operation? That's right, addition. Now, we need to talk about the inverse operation of addition. Well, let's look up here. Adding and subtracting are always together. So the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. Similarly, the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. So in order to move numbers that have a plus or a minus in front of them back and forth on our scale, we have to know that addition and subtraction are inverses. We also have to recognize multiplication and division are inverses. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to move that 4 to the other side. Because remember, numbers want to be with numbers. If it's a plus 4, or we have an addition of 4 on this side, what operation are we going to perform to both sides of this equation to move the 4? Very good. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. When we do this, we're going to notice that now we have a plus 4 and a minus 4. Who remembers what vocab word describes this situation? When we have one number that's positive and one number that's negative. Very good. They're additive inverses. And additive inverses have a sum of 0. So they cancel out. They are no more. Everything else we're going to bring straight down. So we have a 2y that we're going to bring down, an equal sign, and now we're going to calculate 10 minus 4, which is going to give us 6. I'm going to highlight my y because y is still not alone. Y is still stuck with that 2. They're still stuck together. What operation is represented by a number and a letter stuck together like that? Very good. It is multiplication. So what's the inverse operation of multiplication? Very good. Division. So we're going to divide both sides of this equation by 2 in order to get our y alone. y is now alone and very happy. We need to calculate 6 divided by 2 and when we do that we get an answer or solution of 3. So the value of y is 3 or our solution to this equation is 3. Now let's say we want to check this solution. We want to make sure that we're right. What should we do? Well, we should take that solution that we just found and we should substitute it in for the y. We should take y out of the equation and substitute 3 in and see if both sides of that equation are equal to each other. Whoops. All right, let's try it for number 1. We're going to write our original equation exactly how we see it. And now we're going to substitute in that value that we found, which was 3. I'm going to change the color so it's easier for us to see. Now remember, our goal is that all the numbers on the left somehow equal 10. So that's what we're trying to see. So let's use our order of operations to see where we're at. We know we have to do multiplication first, so we're going to do 2 times 3, which gives us 6. Everything else is going to come down exactly how we see it. And now we're going to add 4 plus 6, which we all know is 10. So we know that our solution is correct. y does equal 3. Now, I also wrote in a note over here that reminds us to keep our equation balanced and our scale balanced. That's why it's under our scale picture. And whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do to the other side. All right, let's try example 2. We're going to kick it up a notch. 
Okay, first things first, highlight that variable and draw the scale line. Great. Now, I see P divided by 3 plus 4. So right away, I see addition. What's the inverse operation of addition? Very good, subtraction. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, cross out my additive inverses, they equal 0. I'm going to bring everything else straight down. P divided by 3 equals, let's calculate 8 minus 4 gives us 4. P is not alone yet. It's still stuck to that 3. They're attached by the operation division. What is the inverse operation of division? Very good, multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by 3 to keep it balanced. These will cancel out, and P will be alone. And we're going to calculate 4 times 3, which gives us 12. Now remember, we want to check to make sure we did it correctly. So we're going to write our original equation exactly how we see it. We're going to substitute in the solution that we got, which was 12. And now we're going to just solve the problem to see if we got it correct. 4 divided by 3 is, uh, 12 divided by 3, excuse me, is 4. Plus 4 equals 8. 4 plus 4 absolutely does equal 8, so we are correct. All right, let's look at example 3. Over here, we see that we added in another twist, a nice little distributive property there. So we need to hand out, remember, distribute means to hand out, the same way we distribute papers or distribute assignments in class. We're distributing our 6 into both pieces of the parentheses. So we're going to do 6 times b and get 6b, and 6 times positive 3, which is going to give us plus 18. Everything else stays the same. Highlight that variable, draw that scale line, and let's start solving. Take a minute and predict what you think the first step is going to be in solving this equation. Did you get it right? You should have picked subtract 18 from both sides. If you did, great job. We're going to cancel out our additive inverses, bring everything else down. 6b equals 42. b is still not alone yet, so we still have a little bit of work left to do. What do you think is going to be the next step that we have to perform? Very good. We're going to divide both sides of the equation by 6. These will reduce to 1. B will be alone. And we calculate 42 divided by 6 to get 7. We're going to come down here and check our work. We're going to substitute in our solution of 7 for B. Now there's more than one correct way. You could distribute again to check this and do 6 times 7 plus 6 times 3. I'm just going to do regular order of operations and do 6 times 10 equals 60. And I'm going to think to myself, Ms. Pagano, does 6 times 10 equals 60? Well, yes, it does. Great job. Now before we go, let's summarize what we just talked about. So remember, our summary, we should be able to answer the aim question. Our aim question was, how do we solve algebraic equations? Well, we should be able to come up with a sentence similar to this. To solve an equation, we use the inverse order of operations to isolate the variable. And you know that we always want you to kick it up a notch. And now let's write a sentence about how we can check to make sure our answer makes sense. To check that a solution is true, substitute the solution back into the original equation. On the next two pages, you'll see that there are a bunch of practice questions for solving all different types of uh, one solution equations. You, if you completed IXL, you completed this. 
What I would like you to do now is take a minute, find a piece of scrap paper, and practice these questions right now. And then we will go over the answers. But before you go, I do wanna do one more question together. Question number six. So right here, we're gonna highlight that variable and we're gonna draw that scale line. Now, let's think about what this equation is saying. It's saying S minus three, 63, excuse me, S minus 63 divided by five. Okay, so what's happening here is that S has a negative 63 stuck to it and a divided by five. Because there are no parentheses, the first thing that we're going to do here to both sides is multiply both sides of this equation by five because the inverse operation of division is multiplication. So we're gonna multiply by five here and multiply by five here. These are going to cancel out, it's gonna be gone. We're gonna bring everything else down exactly how we see it. So S minus 63 equals, calculate one times five, gives us five. We're going to highlight our variable, not alone yet. What's stopping S from being alone? Good, that minus 63. What is the inverse operation of subtraction? Excellent addition. Add 63 to both sides. Cancel out your additive inverses. S is alone and equal to 68. And if you wanted to make sure that our answer was correct, you would plug it back in to your solution. You'd substitute it back in to make sure that both sides were equal. All right, work on those practice questions and then we will go over your answers.